Hey guys, welcome to Tyson's Fitness Tips Podcast. If you want to lose weight, increase your energy, improve your health and fitness, and look your best, then you have come to the right place. My name is Tyson Brown. I'm a personal trainer, and my job is to help you transform your body by sharing with you the most up-to-date information on health and fitness. I'm going to distill it all down for you into bite-sized, actionable steps that you can take immediately to see results quickly. Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, you can expect a brand new episode, which will be a mixture of interviews with top experts from around the world in the fitness space, and as well as solo episodes from myself, sharing with you exactly what action steps you need to take to transform your health, your body, and your life. Also, don't forget to listen all the way to the end of the show, because in the middle, I'm going to share with you a time-saving tip, and it might just be a game changer. I know you're short on time, and this one can save you a lot of time and a lot of energy. So, let's get into the show. Yo, what's going on, guys? It is your health and fitness coach, Tyson Brown here, back with another video, and today I want to talk to you about treat meals, cheat days, all that BS that I get asked about all the time, because at the end of the day, I honestly believe that you don't need it and I want to talk to you about it, why. So, I got recently asked a question about Tyson, when it comes to cheat days, what do you think? How often should I have one? Should I have one? What should be made up of it? And at the end of the day, cheat days are absolutely bullshit. And you know why? Because when you have a cheat day, or you have two cheat days, or whatever happens, you're gonna throw yourself out of the calorie deficit. And you know what happens when you're not in a calorie deficit? You're not gonna lose weight. Now, I advocate intermittent fasting, and I absolutely love it, and it's because it works so well. But just because it works so well doesn't mean that you're not, that it doesn't mean it's always gonna be successful, especially if you're eating more food than you burn. Because you're only restricting the amount of food you're eating in that time of the intermittent fasting period. This isn't like increasing crazy hormone regulations. It does, but it's not gonna change the amount of calories you burn or anything like that. And if you're eating more than you burn during the day, at the end of the day, you're still going to put on weight. So you need to make sure that when you have those cheat days and those cheat meals that you're not going to be eating way too much because let's say all week you've been good right oh i've been eating healthy monday to friday then you go out saturday night then you, sorry then you go out friday night for drinks then you go for a saturday greasy breakfast then you go out for lunch then you go out for dinner then you have saturday drinks same thing again sunday you're like oh well it's the weekend i get to relax bullshit why should you get to relax and eat whatever the fuck you want and think that you can still lose weight? Oh, I've been good all week, yeah. Well, it doesn't work like that. You can tell yourself that in your head, but unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. I also want to share with you guys an example of what I used to do, okay? So I used to have a cheat day once a week. And the start of my cheat day, well, I'll tell you the story, right? So my housemate, he, um, he had a birthday and we bought him this really, really nice, huge mud cake and I love mud cake, right? And he only had one slice and nobody else was actually hungry for the cake, so we put it in the fridge. And they said, he said, you know what, I'm not gonna eat it, you guys can have it. Well, when my cheat day came around, I stood in the fridge and I was like, I had a little bit first, you know, I had a little bit of taste and then I had a little bit more and a little bit more and I ate that whole cake in 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes of eating a whole chocolate cake and I felt like shit afterwards. But I was like, you know what? It's my cheat day. But you know what? It actually ruined my head too. And the worst thing is, I didn't lose any weight either because I over ate the amount of food that I should have been eating and it threw me back in a calorie surplus. Because all week I was good, right? I was in a little bit of a calorie deficit. But when I had that huge cake, that's probably a couple of thousand calories just in itself, plus whatever else I had for the rest of that weekend, of course I wasn't gonna lose weight. And that's the thing, it's not about how good you are during the week or how good you are for like a couple of days. You've got to be good all the time. So instead of thinking about cheat days and things like that, follow the 80-20 approach and give yourself treat meals, okay? Treat meals means once every so often you have something that's a little bit different. Once every so often you go and treat yourself to a good meal. You don't go down to Woolworths and buy yourself a pint of crappy ice cream. 
go out for a nice gelato instead. You be fussy about what you're going to eat and you treat your body. Like, yeah, sure, you're gonna have crappy food, but how much better is it when you have a nice tasting gelato as opposed to going to shove yourself down with some something from Woolworths that tastes like shit anyways half the time and doesn't even taste as good as like a Messina gelato or anything like that. So really take time and just think about that. Like when you wanna have a cheat day, is it really worth not having the weight loss? Is it really worth waking up the next day feeling like shit? Is it really worth wasting week after week after week not making any progress? Because you're like, what's going on? I'm eating healthy for the majority of the time. But it doesn't matter whether you're eating healthy or not. If you're throwing yourself out of a calorie deficit, which means you're eating more than you burn, and it's not just in one day, it's during the week too, right? That's what I'm talking about. Because most people, when they have a cheat day, you go crazy on a Saturday, and then you think about, well, I'm gonna do it Sunday too. So it's usually not a day. It's usually most people go way overboard too. So even though magic uh, intermittent fasting, I love it and I advocate it, it's not a magic weight loss tool, like I said. You've still gotta be able to follow the rules of thermodynamics, which is if you burn more than you consume, you will lose weight. If you consume more than you burn, you will not lose weight, right? So don't ever think about as, oh, I'm gonna go and have a cheat today because it's going to ruin your progress, I promise you that. If you want to be able to get the success you want, if you want to be able to get the body you want, you have to go without certain foods you love for a small period of time. Actually, let me rephrase that. You have to reduce the amount of certain foods you love. So if you love drinking beer, you can still lose weight. If you love eating chocolate and ice cream, you can still do that, but it's about following that 80-20 approach, okay? 80% of your food comes from whole, nutritious food, right? Vegetables, lean meats, good source of carbohydrates. 20%, go and have some cake, go and drink some beer, go and do the things you enjoy doing, but make sure it's that 20%. It's not 20% times 20% times 20% because it's gonna throw you out of that. It's not going nuts. It's having one or two treat meals a week. It's going out on a Friday night to a nice restaurant for some Thai food. It's not getting the cheap, shitty MSG Thai from around the corner. It's going to enjoy, like I said, a nice gelato from Messina or from Cow and Moon or you know wherever you are, instead of going, oh, I'm gonna go and buy a whole pint of I don't know, uh, what's a Peter's, Peter's ice cream, I'm gonna buy a liter of that and just go nuts because it doesn't taste as good, full of shit, you're gonna make you feel bad the next day and then you're gonna look down in your stomach on a Monday morning and go, why the fuck have I still got this flab sitting around my stomach? And that's just what I wanna share with you guys because so many people ask the question and I don't know why you need to cheat, right? Why do you need to cheat? Why do you feel like you need to throw so much crappy food in your body to make you feel like more crap? Because you never feel good. You might feel good for a minute or two minutes after it, but you never feel as good as you do, as clear-headed, as productive, as motivated towards your goals when you eat shitty food. So why do you eat that? Like, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, because I always like to eat crappy food. Like I say, I follow the 80-20 principle all the time, but I follow the 80-20 principle, and I make sure that when I go out and you know have some crappy food, it's good quality crappy food too. I'm fussy about going out and eating bad food, because I'm like, you know what, it's gonna be bad. I wanna make sure that it's actually good tasting bad food, and I'm not standing in the fridge shoveling a whole chocolate cake in my stomach just because it's a cheat day. So that's just what I want to share with you guys. So, Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate it. Before you go, can you please do me a massive favor and share this podcast with one friend or family member who you think would benefit from listening? All you have to do is open up your podcast app, click on those three dots next to the episode and click on share episode. Then you can text or email it to that friend or family member and tell them to check it out. Also, if you guys want to connect with me, I'm on all social media platforms, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you want to find me, it's at TysonBPT, T-Y-S-O-N-B-P-T. Also, if you guys like the podcast, please go to iTunes and leave me a rating. This helps me get up the rankings and also helps other people find me so I can help them improve their health and fitness. Once again, thanks for listening and I'll see you on the next episode.